hey, hey! It's Miss Dora! Hello, my jumbo friends! Welcome to yet another math video here on this computer screen. I don't know. Yes, wherever you guys are. Hey, alien friend with us? Welcome aboard. I don't think I've named this alien guy. Although I did talk to him about staying out of the way. <laughs> so, you should not be a problem today. Let's get started, my friends. It says that we're going to be on the same topic that we've been looking at. Cool. I like that. Topic C, making like units numerically. Nice topic. When we come down and look at our objective, and our objective, boy, this looks really simple. Objective. Students will be able to add fractions, making like units numerically. Hmm. This is the key part right here, making like units, as we cannot add them if they're not. We're going to do it numerically. We did them on a number line, and I think we'll be doing something similar. Okay, welcome to what was behind the screen. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, let's get started here. It looks like that we have... Ooh, I think yellow would work very, very well. It looks like we have Jasmine. Woohoo! And her friend are training to run in a two-mile race. That is so far. Yay, Jasmine, you go. Anyway... On Monday, it says that Jasmine runs one half mile. Okay. On Tuesday, she runs one fifth mile further than she ran on Monday. It said that she ran, she runs one fifth, one fifth mile further or farther than she ran on Monday. Okay. Cool enough. So what I did here was I made this little tape diagram, right? We could say that this would be Monday. This would be Tuesday. And as you can see, this would be like the one half mile that Jasmine uh, did run. And then over here, you can see we really don't know how far she ran this time. We don't. This is a big old question mark. Hope you can still see that. So this is a question mark. But we do know that it's one fifth farther. As you can see by comparing, we're saying that this is the half. That's all we have to work with right now. Oh, well, let's come over here and no, let's and let's do this. So it, we we've been working a lot with these model, these area models, and I've made some up already here to kind of get this video cruising along at top warp speed. I mean, sort of a little bit faster. Woohoo! All right. So as you can see, I made two already because we have a half and we have fifths, and we've looked at this before, and you know. Uh, I can't emphasize enough that, well, we can't add anything and figure out uh, how much farther that is because we, we have these in different units. Oh, goodbye. So, we need to get these in the same units. And we learned that by looking at halves, what we could do is, like, if I just want to make fifths and I wanted to make them, like, twice, you know, if I were to split this in half, then my fifths would immediately turn into tenths, wouldn't it? And vice versa with the fifths would do the same. So what I can do is just simply do that. Now I'm going to make um, close, Mr. War, why are you such a perfectionist? I don't know. Okay. There we go. And now I can make a copy. See? Now it's like the other one's disappeared. Now. Now we can show some work here. Let me get out my cram. Okay. And here we had the one half, right? So we're going to make this our half. Look at just like that. We have equal units now. Here we had, I believe, one fifth. And if you recall, the one fifth was going across here. See, so now we have two. So we've doubled the fifths. Okay, and with the with the halves, we've actually it's like been multiplied by by five, right? Giving us tenths here. So now we can solve our problem which is the best part of math, right? Or purpose. So we're gonna take our one half plus one fifth was what our initial, we wanted to add that on to see how much more. And I keep coming down. So one half plus one fifth, now we know is the same as five tenths based on our new area model. And then we have our two tenths over here, there's two of them. And just like that, seven tenths. Now that means that 
based on this, that Jasmine, you, there you are, you know, okay? She actually ran seven, oh, yeah, I guess we'll do it like that. Seven tenths, okay, a mile. It's not even quite a mile, okay, um, on Tuesday. And we change that one fifth here. So this is not how much farther, um, but actually how much did she run on, um, was it Monday or no? Let's see, on Tuesday. No, so, so this was on Tuesday and that was Monday. Well, of course, hello. It's right there. Thank you very much. And this is really, really, really important that we look for those like units. See that? Woohoo! All right. Now, we have another question problem down here just like it never ends right now we have another problem here it says if her friend ran three quarter of a mile on Tuesday how many miles did the girls run in all on Tuesday and now we determined how far okay the Jasmine ran on Tuesday now she's saying if her friend ran this amount so looking at that well first thing I would think of um, you know this is kind of a problem because I'm thinking hmm can, can we actually use the same units here to solve for this one here? Could we use tenths? Okay, so let's look at this problem here. And now we have quarters. Okay, and we have tenths. So, yeah, force. Yeah, we, we can't make force into tenths. That doesn't work very well at all. Hmm. Now I'm wondering if there's maybe another way here. Yeah, it looks like that we're going to have to maybe take the four. Now, if we multiplied that by 10, meaning we make that 10 times is great, right? Then couldn't we do the tenths and then also make it four times so that we get a 40? Let me show you what I mean here. See, first of all, here's our little tape measure here showing the problem okay we have Jasmine's friend and yeah we don't know who that is okay so this is going to be Jasmine's friend here all right friend come on to the end okay so here we would have Jasmine and then here it says her friend ran three quarter of a mile now Seven tenths is 0 0.7. Three quarters is 0.75. Okay, we're trying to figure out what they all together. So it looks like Jasmine's friend ran just a little bit farther, but we just don't have the numbers. So now we come over here and let's go ahead and grab this, our tenths. They're close to the same size? Oh yeah, I think I did it. Wow, okay. So here we can show Jasmine's and now here we can show um, the quarters, which is her friend. And as you can see, yeah, force doesn't work with tenths very well, but look at if we would divide this, again, um, I think of like dividing it, dividing it up into force along with tenths. That's how I would see that, because we have tenths already now, but in a sense though, we're multiplying it by four. Okay, making it four times as many equal pieces and the same over here. So what do we end up with? Uh, let's go ahead and take, here we go, make a copy. Okay, now we have two of them. See now, let's go ahead and quickly do our shading part here. Before we had, uh, it was seven tenths. Well, remember, tenths were going across, right? So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I went outside the line. Okay, please, please don't tell anyone. Nah, it's on video. No one's going to know. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then here you have three quarters. And this was going this way, right? We had one quarter, two quarters, and three quarters, and you're rich with 75 cents. Okay, so you see how that works. Now we have our equal units again, but we have, what do we do? We, do? we have we have 40ths. That's right, the big four zero. So now here, you see we have one, two, three, four by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times four, 28 out of 40. And here we have three, and then that's gonna be by the 10. 
So that means we got 30 over 40. Now we suddenly have 28, because we're trying to add theirs together. 28 over 40 plus 30 over 40. We have this huge number here. We're going to have 58, 58 over 40. Basically, we're trying to find out what they, what they ran together, so we added that. Now, one way we can do this here is, since this is such a huge number, we could actually look at our whole here. Now, 58 over 40, of course, 40 over 40, and let me move this down. This one you do, or an extend me page. So 40 over 40 makes one whole, and we have that there. So really, if I were to write it this way, it would mean the same, but now I can say that equals one, see, and then 18 over 40. However, I want to reduce the 18 and the 40. You can do that by common factors. By looking at it, hmm, nine, no. A two would definitely, because they're both even numbers, if I were to divide by two, I could end up with one, my whole part. 18 divided by two, nine, and then that's going to be 20. Yeah, and that's in simplest form here because 9 and 20, they do not uh, share any common factors. Cool. So, uh, that really concludes that problem there. Now it's time to go on to the concept of element. Start looking at these problems. Now, um, let me see if I can get this. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Okay, so for example, now like here, one half, and this was like in our problems, uh, the problem that we just completed, if we multiply it by five, by both the numerator and the denominator, you can see that we would end up with five tenths, okay? Which is double, you know, in the sense, or not double, this is being multiplied by five. It means five times greater, because the two is five times greater, and the one is five times greater, giving us five tenths. But you notice it's still one half. This is one half, this is one half. We were able to do that by multiplying the numerator, the denominator by the same quantity. Okay, seems easy enough. In fact, this is one way we could look at it, is that here, it became five times as many selected units. We only had one unit before, when we multiplied it by five, now we have taught five times as many. And that's also true, <laughs> That's also true for the denominator. If you look at that too, same thing. Five times as many selected units in, in the whole because the two, okay, we have five times as many now, making it 10. Seems simple enough, doesn't it? Hmm, one would think that we're just simply doing that skill there and learning how to um, multiply both the numerator and the denominator. And we could also do the same thing for the other one um, because of the one half if we had the one fifth. So if you look at this, eh, it looks about right. Let me get a tad bit larger. Get as close as I can. So now you can think to yourself, well, what would this be? We had the halves and now we had the fifths. What would we have to multiply again to the numerator and the denominator to get that tenths? We're looking for that same smaller unit of tenths. Well, you guys may actually see my answer up here already. But yeah, we have to multiply by two. So, woo, mega two. I'm sorry, you're a little bit too big. Slow down, relax, there you go. Okay, in fact, I'm just gonna make a copy of you since I already got you the same size, see? Now if you, oh, what, you're getting dizzy? Come on, sit up straight, there we go. And come back this way. So now we have times two and times two. So now we can write a whole nother fraction. And that fraction's already ready to go. Okay, because one times two is two, five times two is 10. Look, they're like opposites of each other. If you look at the denominator, that's kind of what we've done here. Here we have the two, and it was in two equal parts. Here's five, five equal parts. Now we're simply almost, well we have, not almost, we've literally multiplied by the opposite denominator and gotten ourselves equivalent fractions. And, two new fractions, two new equivalent fractions that actually contain the same denominator. Okay, seems easy enough. All right, let's go to the next page. So now it's time to do a little bit of practice and then we'll be done. 
Time for a little bit of practice. So let's say, let's take, well, let's go ahead and show that one problem first. So you can see it all the way through. We could actually write that because we had in our brackets here, because that was being added to the one fifth, if you recall, the two over two, okay? And now we have five tenths here, because we have the five times, and now we're gonna add that to two tenths, and then you can see how that's going to equal seven tenths. Is there, are there other units that we could have used to make these denominators the same? Like we use the 10 here. And actually there are, there's actually quite a few different units we could use. Think about it, how would we determine that? Well, 10 is a, a common multiple of two and five. So if we were to actually count by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, and then do the same thing for five, 10, 15, 20, you can see that they share that common multiple of 10. Well, therefore, if we continued on, and if we did continue on here, well, I'll put dot, 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 so you know this is, I'm gonna come right over here, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, right? 22, we're gonna keep count multiples. Here, same thing, well, we're counting by five, so that's gonna be 25, 30, well look here, we already have another common multiple of 20 here. So we could have used 20 as well. Well, what would that look like? Hmm. Well, if we have our half that we were looking at before times, so what are we gonna have to multiply to get our 20th here? And that's right, if you said 10, you're correct, two times 10 Okay, is 20, so one times 10 is going to be 10. And as you can see, in this case, um, we have um, a equivalent fraction, because one half and then 10 over 20 is one half. Okay, now with the other fraction that we had, which was our fifths, well, what are we gonna have to multiply to get our 20th? As you can see, it's four, five times four is 20, so we, we're gonna multiply this by four, so we're getting four twentieths. And as you can see, four twentieths is still one fifth, okay? And it's just equivalent fraction. Now, both of these. So this was, what we did here, we can do with a different denominator. The units are just that much smaller. The units are twice as small, if you will, because these are tens and these are 20, so that means they're twice as small, the actual unit itself. And if you also notice here, when we were counting here by fives, look at it, it was the one, two, three, fourth. That's how we're getting that times four. It was the fourth multiple there, okay? Where when we came over here, look at, it, it was the 10th. We had to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. It's the 10th one, and then we multiply that by 10. Okay, let's do one more to make sure we're on track. And let's do, yeah, let's, let's write it this way. I'm gonna get my yellow. That yellow really looks nice on here. So this is what we had. We had one half plus one fifth. Well, we already determined that was seven tenths by getting that common denominator, finding out that these two numbers, if we were to find out the multiple of those two numbers, it would give us that common multiple of 10, which is what we were doing and we were showing with our area model. You see, that also means then that if we're doing that, that we could continue on and or we could simply say, well, I'm gonna take seven tenths and let's just say, I'm gonna go ahead and um, let me go ahead and just multiply this by two and that by two. That's gonna give me 14 twentieths. And then of course that means that, oh, I wrote 10. <laughs> 14 twentieths is also equal to that. And so is 21 over 30 and 35 for multiplied by five over 50. These are all 
equivalent fractions. And this is what the objectives were looking at, fractions making like units numerically, what we were looking at. Do I have another page? Ooh, I have a green one. I'll take that green page. Why not? Last one here, pen, black. Okay, so we have one half plus, one, uh, plus two thirds. A lot of different ways. Okay, you might see just getting the opposite of these would um, multiplying that fraction by three thirds and that fraction here by halves would get us our common denominator, and it will. But we could also, two, four, six, you could also go ahead and start listing the multiples of the number. And as you can see right away, six does stand out. But when we do this, we're gonna show one half, okay, and we want to multiply it by, we're gonna multiply it by six, that's the multiple we're looking for, right? So what would we have to multiply in order to get our new equivalent fraction? In fact, it would be three. So we're actually multiplying by three thirds. So now nah, this, this is kind of missing. Let me, I don't want to confuse you here. Let me do it this way, okay? Only because I put the multiplication sign in there. So let's, so we're multiplying by three thirds. Okay, and then here we're adding our two thirds. Okay, and it's going to be multiplied by two over two. Okay, because this was the other denominator. We just switch them. Now you can see we have three over six, which is one half, plus, and then over here we have four over six, which is two thirds, equals seven over six. And of course, that's the same as six over six, right? Because that's our whole. Plus, there would be one left over, one over six. Now that's going to equal one and one six. Okay, and that, my friends, concludes this video. So, live long and prosper.